Yesterday, we heard the story about a Detroit music festival that was charging non-POC double what they charged people of color. In a viral tweet, Zuby Music on Twitter said, festival charging different prices based on race. Thumbs down. Well done, intersectional radicals. You've become the very racists you claim to stand against. So woke, so very woke. But will they in fact go broke? I don't know, maybe not. A lot of people are still defending them. But my understanding is that this is illegal. Did you know there's a guy who's like really well known for suing bars that have ladies nights? Because when a, when an, uh, when a venue does a ladies night, they are discriminating based on sex by charging more or less based on sex. So for a, for a music festival to actually list, look at this, non-POC versus early bird POC. And look at this, a regular ticket, 40 bucks, a person of color ticket, 20 bucks. That's racist. <laughs> of course, the argument we see from many of these people is that, you know, uh, they say only white people can be racist. That's not true. And then, I, you know, what's really funny is because uh, I'm sure many of you guys who, who watch my videos, listen to my content, Know that I am mixed race, but fortunately, fortunately, I don't qualify because I have been in circumstances where I've been told in no uncertain terms, no, I'm not a person of color. And what's really, really weird is that Candace Owens recently tweeted that Colin Kaepernick was white and so was Sean King. Newsweek ran a story saying she falsely called them white. They are white. I'm not saying they're only white, but yes, they're literally both part white. How is that fake? It's, just, it's, it's such absurdity that if you're on the side of the intersectional feminists, the radical left, you can claim you're not white if you're mostly white. But if you disagree with them, all of a sudden you're just white. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what Zubi had to say. And there is a big update. However, as per the title of this video, Tiny Jag pulls out of Afro Future Fest after learning white people would be charged a different price to attend. I give you an applause. I am now a huge fan of Tiny Jack. I actually pulled up some of her music. Not actually a big fan. I'm just being, I'm kidding. But I am a fan of her politics. And she actually does have one song I think is pretty good. Not a lot of attention for her music. But you know what? I really appreciate people standing up on principle and standing up for equality. So uh, let's go back to Zuby. He said, would love to have, uh, would love, would have loved to be at the meeting where they discussed this. This is the kind of BS that happens when people think diversity just means different skin tones rather than ways of thinking and opinions. No remotely grounded sane person would have approved this idea. He says, this is legitimately offensive to everybody. Well, some people are defending it. Truly, uh, truly terrible business decision. And yes, uh, illegal. He says, this is what the future holds if people don't call out this crap. It's especially pervasive in arts and entertainment. People applaud it and say it's progression. No, it's not. It's, it's like, dude, you want to go back in time to segregation? That's not progress. That's regress, period. He said, I've been ring ringing alarm bells about this, uh, ringing alarm bells for a while. Best thing to do would be to just boycott festivals, events, universities with racist and sexist practices. I mean, actually racist and sexist. This is egregious. Let them get woke and go broke. Stuff like this angers me. It's a huge step backwards. Zuby says, I'm an independent artist. While you're here, please check out my music and merch. So, you know, it's spot on Zuby for calling this out. So yes, check out Zuby's music and merch. Um, but but here's, what I, here's, what, here's what I want to do. There's this one tweet where somebody responded to, like Zuby's tweet went viral. It got like 11,000 retweets so far. This person right here says, that pricing was obviously based on the fact due to historical targeted financial damage to black people in particular they might not be able to afford the same ticket price while a white person can. So lowering the price makes it possible for them to afford it. And as Zubi, uh, Zubi aptly points out, white people can be poor too. And not all non-white people are poor, far from it. It's insulting, racist, ridiculous, and discriminatory. If they wanted to make it more affordable, they could lower the price for everyone. Right, spot on. Why can't we have a discussion about class? What if they said, you know, if you make less than a certain amount, we have like a poverty rate. That would certainly help all those who are, you know, uh, uh, of lower income, right? He says, uh, I really wish I didn't need to explain this. It's so obvious. It's not complicated. But let's take a look over at what happened with Tiny Jag, who pulled out of the festival after she learned uh, white people will be charged a different price to attend. I believe that. Yeah. So this is, I believe this is the same event. And interestingly, 
Zuby's tweet went viral. He posted it on the 6th of July. This story is from the 4th of July. So spot on for maybe that's how he found out about it. So let's check this story out. Uh, I believe it's I believe it's the same same event, right? Afro Future. Yeah, Afro Future Fest in Detroit. Jillian Graham, a.k.a. Detroit based rapper Tiny Jag, pulled out of a local music festival this week because she disagreed with its pay model in which people of color would pay less for tickets than white festival goers. Graham said she only found out about Afro Future Fest's pay model when a, a white friend reached out to her and sent her a screenshot via Instagram that outlined the pay difference. The early bird POC, I mean, not even the early bird, the tickets, period, are double if you're white. So what makes you white? Would Sean King have to pay double? Would I have to pay double? We're both biracial. Whether or not you agree with Sean King's story, I'm saying the point is, if someone is still mostly white, do they get to claim you to be a person of color for, the, for you know, this event? She says, quote, I was immediately enraged just because I am biracial, Graham tells Metro Times. I have family members that would have, under those circumstances, been subjected to something that I would not ever want them to be in, especially not because of anything that I, I have going on. Graham says after the festival confirmed the price structure, she immediately withdrew from the event and requested that she, re she be removed from any promotional materials. She says because she had publicly supported the festival without knowing about the discrepancy between the ticket prices, that she had, public she had to publicly withdraw her support as well. She did so by taking a Twitter. She indicated feeling very triggered and discussed how the pay model would have affected her family personally, specifically her grandmother. A lot of the songs that I perform are from my first project called Polly. That is my grandmother's name, Graham says. How do you want me to come to a performance and perform these songs off a mixtape that is titled after this white woman that you would have charged double to get in here? Like, it's just outrageous from so many different angles. Seriously. Man. Tiny Jag, big fan now. I love, uh, principle-wise, I'll check out your music. A couple, couple good songs. Not, uh, I'm, I'm just not a big rap person as it is. I'm not going to pretend to be. But I got to say, I, I hope Tiny Jag gets a bunch of publicity off this because she really deserves it. And what she expresses here with her, you know, with her grandmother being white and not appreciating it, uh, I feel I, I, that resonates with me, right? One of the big issues I take with the intersectional racism we see from the left is that it puts mixed race people in a really weird position where they're both simultaneously privileged and unprivileged, and you don't know when or how. Notice, I shaved recently. When I'm shaven, people assume, well, actually, I, I can't tell you what people assume I am, because I I, it's, it's all different. But typically, if I shave and I don't wear glasses, people will say, like, you're white. When I don't shave, I have the very obvious, like, a bit of Asian facial hairstyle. Then all of a sudden, I'm Puerto Rican. Don't ask me why. That's just what people think I am. During Occupy Wall Street, it's, it, I'll tell you this, it's, it's usually people who uh, are black will assume I'm white, and people who are white will assume I'm Latino of some sort. So I don't, I, it's, it's a confusing position to be in. It's frustrating, and it's anger-inducing, especially when it's like, you want to act like the, the racism that my family experienced was bad, fine, but then you're going to act like my dad somehow has a hand in all of this? Like, nah, that's not okay. You know, like my dad, my, my dad, a member of my family experienced the same thing my family did. And it's crazy to me that they would look basing ticket price based on race. You're telling white people who agree with you too, they have to pay a penalty. How does that make sense? It reminds me of uh, uh, the episode of Game of Thrones where uh, Daenerys, I don't know if you're not familiar, just I'll explain it to you. So, so, so Daenerys finds the city and they have slavery. So she executes the nobles. And then one guy comes up and says, but my dad was fighting against slavery and you killed him because she didn't care. That's what happens when you say an arbitrary, you know, like skin color determines whether you are a good, good person or a bad person. And this is why we believe in individual liberties, because it turns out there actually are a lot of good people who aren't racist, who would actually help you dismantle these, you know, these issues and the problems you face. But you look at them as a racist and say, I don't like you because of your skin color. OK, that's a problem. Let's read on. They go on to say that it's, uh, it comes at a time with reparations. I don't care about the rep reparations conversation. Graham says that while she is definitely for the goal of putting equity back into the black community, she doesn't agree with the method being used to do so. It's non-progressive and it's not solution focused in my eyes. It seems almost like it has spite. And unfortunately, with spite comes hate. And that's just not, not obviously going to be a good direction for us to go if we're looking for positive change. 
Graham says it was difficult to pull out of the festival because she appreciates the support of her fans. It's not fun to withdraw out of shows, especially at home, especially in your hometown, and especially when your supporters have been so good to you. It's not, it's, it's also not fun to do that to my fellow black women like that sucks too. It sucks that this is a thing that's put a wedge here. While the festival organizers declined Metro Times request for comment, they explained their rationale behind the ticket pricing on the festival's event bright page. Full stop. I don't care what your explanation is. It's literally, excuse me, literally illegal. It is literally illegal to charge people different amounts of money based on their race. I'd like to say, you know, like to the people defending this, how do you have people driving hundreds of miles to a bakery in Colorado, I think it is, to, to yell at a baker who doesn't want to bake a cake for a gay wedding or a transgender coming out cake? And then you're going to go ahead and run afoul of civil rights law. I'm not saying it's the same people arguing. I'm just saying like it comes to be on the left. It is left-wing intersectional feminism and equity that is pushing this. And it, also, it is also intersectional feminists that are targeting a baker saying, you should service me under the law. Okay, well, the same goes for you too, right? I am of the opinion, if you're participating in public, then you should participate in public. It's a complicated issue with the bakery. Because in this case, he said, I would service, you know, the couple, make a cake, but not that message because you can't force me to speak. That's a First Amendment argument. And it's the same argument the left argues for Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. It's, it's mind blowing. How, how do you have, you know what, man, you have the left. It's, I'm, I'm doing air quotes because it's like a, a subsection. It's like a large group of left wing individuals who say a private business can do what they want. Then they complain the bakery should have to bake a cake. They're both First Amendment arguments. The baker is saying, you can't force me to put a message on a cake. And Twitter saying, you can't force us to host this conversation. Pick one. Pick, pick one. <laughs> I am of the opinion that I lean towards. I'm not an absolutist, but I, I lean towards, you know, look, it, make the cake. You, may, you might not appreciate the message, but I wouldn't consider it to be your speech for making the cake. And if Twitter, Twitter should also allow people to, you know, to post their messages. There is a big difference here in that the bakery is small. It's like one dude. And you could probably just go find a different baker and stop, you know, getting in his face. Twitter is a monopoly on what it is. You know, we, we, we need to change that. But these big tech companies control way too much power. So it's not the same thing. It's not. But here's what they said. Equality is this is from the festival. Equality means treating everyone the same. Equity is ensuring... Everyone has what they need to be successful. Oh my God, dude. First of all, it's ensuring. <laughs> but we don't, we don't, we don't need to, to, to go after their grammar or their vocabulary here. But they basically say our ticket structure was built, well, they literally say, to ensure that the most marginalized communities, people of color, are provided with an equitable chance at enjoying events in their own community, Black Detroit. Affording joy and pleasure is unfortunately still a privilege in our society. No, okay, full stop, dude. Look, man, I got, I, I have, I have friends of all different races, of all different class, okay? I have friends who are uh, white and poor, white and rich, Asian and poor, Asian and rich. Like, dude, your race doesn't determine whether or not you can make money in today's society. I certainly agree with the notion that in the past, there was, there was racism and systemic, uh, you know, institutionalized uh, racism that made it harder for historic wealth to pass down generation to generation. That's a whole other conversation we can have. As of today, there are quite a few people of varying ethnicities that aren't white that are extremely wealthy. In fact, I mean, look at Oprah. So, so here's the problem I have with race-based, you know, like the race-based, you know, pricing. You're going to tell me that Will Smith's kids and Oprah's kids deserve cheaper tickets? Nah, that's a joke, okay? There are people who are, you know, there are people of color who have been very successful for several generations, and they're wealthy. And they're wealthier than Latinos, and they're wealthier than whites, but there, there are, you know, I, on average, I believe per capita, white people have, um, it's something like ten dollars or $15,000 more per year than, the black, than black people. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into all that. My numbers are probably off. The point is, it, it's illegal, and it doesn't actually solve the problem of class. When you, all you're really doing is putting poor white people up against poor black people, and then telling them the white people have it better. That's not going to solve the problem of class. That's not going to deal with the fact that it's not going to deal with exploitation and oppression. And you know what, man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this one up and just say basically spot on to Tiny Jack for pulling out. But she really presents like uh, in, in her statement about, you know, being biracial and having a grandmother. She, she accurately explains the problem with this. 
How do you rectify your beliefs with mixed race people? You don't, which puts me in this awkward position, right? I am never going to agree with these people because they're racists. They are identitarians. What they are doing is illegal. And I will tell you this, as I've stated time and time again, you want to talk about why I'm concerned about this? Point to the alt-right individual, the white identitarian in government and media. Maybe you can name a couple, one or two. They like to claim Trump is. No, Trump is not an overt. It's ridiculous. Okay, the actual alt-right white identitarian types are not in government. They're not in media. They're struggling. They struggle with their message. The left-wing identitarians are all over Congress. They're all over the media. They're running these events. And that's a serious problem for our country. So you know what? I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next video will be at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all there.